our keynote speaker is a very, very respectable gentleman in the world of marketing. Um, he has over two decades of cognitive experience in brand and marketing management. Well, he has all the requisite skills and competencies to lead any marketing function towards delivering growth and profitability. Uh, he has designed and executed several growth strategies for leading brands in Nigeria and across Africa. The keynote speaker holds an MBA from the Pan Atlantic University, Lagos Business School, and a Chartered Postgraduate Diploma in Marketing from the Chartered Institute of Marketing UK. He has attended several executive trainings, including the Kellogg Business School, Harvard University, the Coca-Cola University, amongst others. Uh, our keynote speaker was formerly a senior brand manager at PZ Cousins, a marketing, former marketing manager at Saab, Saab Miller, former head of marketing and sales at Grand Oak Limited. He is currently the acting marketing director for the Coca-Cola company in Nigeria, and he is also the founder and lead tutor at Brand Management Academy in Nigeria. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to please welcome our keynote speaker, Mr. Abiodun Ajiborade. Okay, good morning, everyone. So maybe you have set me up, but again, uh, thanks for that introduction. Um, and thanks for thanks to um, Adma for this um, invitation and the privilege to speak to great minds that are currently on this platform. And everyone that, that, that you know, join us this morning, thank you for joining us. Uh, without you, this event will have been um, won't be, you know, possible. But for you being here is a great privilege to have you. Thank you very much. Um, so I'm going to share my screen. I have a few thoughts to to to, sh to discuss, uh, which are just thoughts started for for our conversation because I know that we have great panelists that are very very, you know, they are veteran in the industry of digital marketing. And they will be able to do justice to a lot of some of the questions that probably you have in your mind. And um, I'm sure they will guide us through when we get to that panel discussion um, point. But from my hand, it's just from a business point of view, I just want to um, share my thoughts and, uh, you know, um, try to um, chat a course for further conversation as we as we move ahead. Just give me a second. Let me try and project my screen. Uh, thanks for coming. My name is Biyadu Anjigorodi and uh, I'm going to be doing justice to the topic that I've been given, you know, creating sustainable integration and the action word there is integration of technology um, and marketing in Nigeria and then maybe beyond Nigeria depending on where you operate from. Um, and I'm going to start with, I think, some couple of, sorry um, so that I can um, so that I can so let me just pull it up okay I can see you but again I, I'm, I'm believing you can see the screen so um, I'm going to be you know speaking to you know let's understand where we, were, we, we came from in terms of technology and integrating into into marketing and then let's know where we are now and then begin to now look at what are the possibilities that, that currently exist in the in generally globally and that we can bring into bear into nigeria so a quick background and few of you um and i'm sure a lot of you who probably are beyond maybe and i'm very sure people on this platform nobody is less than 15 20 years old um, i'm assuming that and if that is true we will remember quite well that around 20 years ago, if you need to actually send a message to people, probably you need to go to the post office, write a letter, put it there, buy a stamp, and then, you know, it takes a long day before um, before it gets to, to, to the recipient. And, uh, and some of us even lost our admission letter in the process. We hide the school post and all of that. I'm, I'm sure you can recollect the audience that we used to cross in those days. The second thing, think about when we used to have this type of, uh, you know, telephone in which maybe in the entire entire city, maybe it's just two people that are privileged to have that. If or if, in those days, it was for, um, you know, the, 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 the rich people and then nobody can assess it. And majorly, it's very static. It's not something you can move around and it is, you know, expensive. 
Um, most often, um, when when NITE decide to do their own, they, it is unreliable. You can't even you know assess it again. Um, you know, again, if you look at in those days, television used to be the probably the only way which you can see any audiovisual uh, materials, and, and those TV stations then are regulated. They only start by 4 a 4 p.m. at night uh, in the evening, rather, and you see people sitting down, and when they start, you hear oh. As if they want to start, so you know that okay, it's about NT is going to start. And they will sing national anthem, and then we start looking at the at the at the content that were pro, pro, you know provided during those period of time. You know, very restrictive monotonous content, and then uh, it was it was it was a it was a, a a different world during those period of time. When you look at our distribution opportunity, then we we only have open market technically. Um, and those open markets are not even something that opens on a daily basis. You have to like, you know, go every five, five days to the market. That is when you can interact with products. Um, you know, think about it then in, in those days, those who are even manufacturing, um, they, you see a lot of manual manufacturing or semi-manual, which is which require a kind of automated plus human intervention. And then it takes a long period of time for you to get innovation out of the way. And so so it was that was the life we used to we, we used to live back then. But suddenly, you know, technology came and actually began to transform the way we do marketing, the way we look at businesses. And uh, Currently, you will realize very well that, you know, um, now we have not just TV as one of the platforms, we now have different platforms where we can actually share instant messaging. Think about think about what we do on, on, on our social media platform. You send a message to somebody and you're receiving instant reply almost immediately, not like post office that you have to wait for days. The level of engagement and conversation has gone a bit very, very, very higher because you can interact with people on a real time and online basis. And you know, now we have different, you know, uh, you know, what do you call it? Um, uh, communication means uh, you have telephone, you have, you know, mobile services, you have data services and value added services, video messaging, things that are barrierless. As we speak, I know a lot of people are joining from different parts of the country, maybe even outside the country. So it means it's, tell, it's telling you what technology has done to how, how we view business and how we do business currently. Modern trade, look at now, we have different ways in which we actually, you know, um, get our product across to the consumers. Um, you know, we have modern trade, we have e-commerce, and COVID, like Uti said, you know, taught us a different lesson at the, you know, at time. For my business, I it was fast tracking what we do on, 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 on e-commerce. Then it was like, okay, we're just there. But COVID actually, you know, led everybody to move straight into e-commerce because we realized that we need to get across to consumers and we just we can't just depend on the traditional way of getting across to to consumers during that period you see a lot of you know new to market emerging people were drones were being used to deliver product to people in their homes and that was amazing because of what the environment or the context actually created um you realize now today that our packaging our production process is now you know automated from end to end and you see you see minimal very minimal manual intervention you see for for, for i can talk for some of my factories and from the beginning to the end you don't get any human intervention until even if it's packaging until it moves into the vehicle that goes into distributing it innovation is more faster now because you're getting things done you're ha having a lot of things that technology has enabled and it's giving us you know opportunity to innovate at a very very agile and a speedy speedy manner Packaging has evolved over a period of time, and I'm going to show you some of the things that you know technology has been able to help us to do from a packaging point of view. Um, another thing is our offerings. The way we offer our product now, you know, has gone beyond just having Coke in just bottle. And I'm giving Coca-Cola as an example. You have Coke in cans. You have Coke in PET. Now you have Coke in some countries. You have Coke in 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 draft where you 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 pour Coke in that. And I think it, 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 the happens there. If you go to eateries, you see some of those things that they pour from the from the um, from the from the machine to you. So it has technology has advanced the way we interact with our brand, the way we interact with consumers and what we can do. Now you can see some, you know, emergence of, you know, um, 
artificial intelligence, machine learning. You, most of you probably you have interacted with the software call um, called um, Christopher. It's it's like you know it's 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 something that actually have a way of communicating on behalf of the brand without anybody being there. And these are emerging, these are things that we're seeing currently that technology is enabling the marketing world to actually begin to um, be more, you know, um, more targeted when we speak to consumers, more, more efficient when we speak to consumers. And then see, why is it important for us to actually embrace technology and digital um, as, as the case may be from, from, for, for marketing to be, to be successful? One, you need, the, you need technology for you to understand perfectly who your consumers are because this is some of these things that we do through research you see research that has been done through pool through through um through google google form through now through survey monkey this gives you opportunity to have access instant almost instant access to who your consumers are you 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 technology now helps us to understand what are they consuming what do they buy how do they buy we can do data mining from the back end and understand the the purchasing uh, what we call the purchasing behavior of consumers um we also technology has enabled us to also understand why why do they buy sorry everyone um so so the inputs so one Go ahead. In Go ahead. Integration, you know, the point of execution and aims us to actually unravel consumer needs. Not just unraveling consumer needs, also help us to actually validate those needs. It's not to just say this is this need exists. And I need to, I think I have a few more minutes. I'm going to be very, very fast so that I don't, I don't eat into other people's time. Validate the needs and then, you know, again, unravel the human truth behind the needs because there's always a driver for every need that consumer actually um, are looking for. So through technology, think about it during this COVID period, ordinarily we'll go out and do tech and do research and, you know, do you know, uh, what we call it, uh, focus group and all of that to gather information. During COVID, we were, there was lockdown. Nobody could do anything. So technically, we have to actually devise a way of gathering same information online and, you know, do segmentation online, validate people, re respondent online, and then capture it, the information, which then helps us to actually take our business decision. So technology must be applied at the point of input to understand what exactly you need to give to consumers. Technology needs to also play a big role in innovation management. Today we speak about co-creation. Co-creation about, you know, sending your ideas and we have different people, different idea banks where people go in and actually top idea, co-create and develop a product for, for businesses. Technology must also, you know, be embedded when we begin to talk about product testing. Think about it. Today, when you there was something that Adidas did where you can then now actually test a shoe or a sneakers, whatsoever you want to buy, you test it using an application on your phone to see how it looks on your leg, even before you get to the store. And this is the power of technology. And this is what technology is bringing and changing the way we do marketing. Think about innovation labs. Innovation labs are places where you can go to and actually plug out innovation that people are creating into a bucket. And this is what technology is helping us to unravel. Think about technology as an optimizer for us to understand what is the architecture of investment? How should we invest our marketing, in, our marketing budgets? Technology will tell you that, oh, this B board uh, this, 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 uh, what do you call it? This TV, this is the listenership of URC of this TV or radio station. It is true power of technology that you begin to understand what blog do you, do you buy into when you want to deploy your, 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 your resources on digital platform. It is true technology that you understand those back end information that gives you some level of comfort for you to say, okay, if I put my ad here, the opportunity to see here is higher than here. Again, thinking about what technology needs to do at the level of integration, it is to 
explore what are the new things and what are the next things that we should be thinking about to help us, you know, help our strategy at the input level to be more focused, more targeted, and more granular, and more important, more efficient. At the, integ at the execution level, we need technology to help us to do what? To, to make our experience. For example, when you begin to talk about consumer experience, today we are spanning the EAC, you know, artificial, uh, what do you call it? Artificial reality and virtual reality being used at the experiential platform. We can't continue the way we are doing marketing or experiential, you know, events, just the same way we are doing it today. In the era in which a lot of things have happened, COVID has changed the way people actually receive experience. You see things happening in the robotic or robotic world now. A lot of things are being done outside the country that you know it's robot that is doing that. When you go, for example, you go to I was I was I saw something on the internet just just a few days ago where robot actually direct your path at the airport. For example, you are going to Gate D and you don't know where Gate D is. The robots are there. All you just need is to plug in what you are doing and it will direct you to the gate. This is what technology is bringing in into the way we do business and the way we rethink our approach to you know engaging consumer we see things about machine learning being done outside the country think about amazon go amazon go is you know you don't need to you don't need a it's a self service just go in pick the pick the items and then things are things just happen your payment is settled and all of that Today we are talking about chips going into the hands of people. And that is the world that we are going to see next in the future. Where all your payment system, all everything is integrated into a chip. That you don't need to carry any other thing. Probably you don't even need to carry a phone. You speak directly from. I know we are very, very Christian-like in you know religions and all of that in Nigeria. But again, this is happening across the world. We need to now begin to look at things that are cultural permit that we can bring in into Nigeria to change the landscape of what we do in marketing. Another thing that we can do at the execution stage is data collection. Today we do events. You ask for the data. It is difficult for the agency to give you the data. Today people go to buy things at shop price. They go to, to buy things at spa. They don't have data to support who is buying. Why are they buying? What is the economic you know, demographic of the person buying? Where does it live? What is the lifestyle? We don't have those information. Technology is an enabler that can help us capture this information and then give us input that we can use to make very solid and sound business decisions. Today, we have opportunity in target marketing. It's not just blasting things on the digital platform. It is about mapping the digital footprint of consumers and understand where exactly they go so that you can serve them the content that appeals to that occasion. Another one is about, you know, understanding technology efforts to understand what is the mass, what, what is the optimal mix for our marketing today. Do you need a TV for everything? Do you need a radio? I don't think so. But you can't do that with your brain alone. You know, technology will tell you that this is the optimal approach for you to deliver your campaign and still be effective. Today we'll talk about blockchain. Blockchain is about you know, distribution. We don't have data for our distribution. We don't know who, who is buying, where are they buying. We don't even understand the content of our route to market. And this is the power in which technology can bring back to our business, our marketing you know, orientation in Nigeria. The top level is what do you do about consumer engagement? And one of it is talking about you know chat box, chat 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 box, the digital digital en engagement, image recognition, no barcode on your barcode you begin to interact with consumer. Interaction with consumer goes beyond just you know TV, you no know, outdoor, you no know, radio or digital. Packaging material today is a platform for interaction. How do we begin to leverage technology to change the way we do all of these things today? And when you now look at the output led to it, you're talking about measurements. Hey, again, marketing is about delivering value to organization. It's not just doing all of this great work without understanding what is the measurement behind it. Am I getting the arrow high that I've set for this? Mark, you know, technology helps you with people data system management. It helps you with creating dashboard that you just need to refresh on a Monday morning and then it gives you all your information. 
that you don't need to start looking at one exam to the other and the other. It is technology that will enable all of this. Technology helps up with feedback system, customer relationship management, on your packaging. Can you put something that if somebody put a thumbprint on it or scan a code, it can give you a feedback that synchronizes into your system. Read time online without waiting for the consumer to have consumed it before it gives you the feedback. You can get feedback right at the packaging level, at the purchasing level, at the consumption level. It is only technology that can help us to actually do all of this. So because when we have technology to support us, at the end of the day, it helps us as marketers to de demonstrate the financial relevance of marketing active initiatives. Because we are being questioned on a daily basis by leaders, by finance team, that what are we doing in marketing? How do we justify the money that they are giving us? It is through technology that we can justify this. And I will move to the next slide. I hope you can see the next slide. Opportunity areas, and I've touched on it, for some of the exhibitors that we have today, this is a plea to you to help us. I still believe that we are trying our best, but we have opportunity and gaps. Today, we use diary and arms to actually measure what happens on our TV station. That is still very subjective. In advanced world, there are people meters, which is automated and is in real life, real time, that you can capture the impression and viewership. Today, we don't even know what our b boards are delivering. We're just there. Yeah, they say the b board is there, it's, it's very positioned. How do you data capture what exactly the b board is delivering? So we need you to help us develop tools, technology that help us manage the media effectiveness and efficiency so that it can help us, you know, utilize a, a very, very small marketing budget in an effective and in a very, very um, um, valued manner so that we can get value out of what we, what we plug in. The third thing is about, you know, you, I talk about data capturing and I've spoken about that. How do you help us to go beyond brick and mortar into getting real-time online data? It is a, it's still a challenge for us in Nigeria. The third thing is about the shopper science. And I, and I talked on it when I was speaking into the, into, into the output. How do you begin to understand the, the psychology of shopper in the outlet? Today, we don't know why they buy. We don't even know how they move within the eyes. What is driving their movement? These are things that neuroscience help us to do that is built in into technology. We need your help to help us get tools and things and you know technology that help us solve this problem so that we can make informed decisions, so that we can serve our consumers better, so that we can actually deliver value to our businesses. And as I round up, Today's marketers are more empowered based on what we currently do. Yes, we have opportunity. We are more empowered and we should take and leverage the opportunity that we have in our hands. We are better off than people that did marketing 20 years ago. Let's leverage that to actually create value for our consumers, create value for our brands and actually create value for our businesses. As we actually journey on this platform, this is a chart for all of us to actually embrace technology. And I'm actually speaking to exhibitors today to look inward, to help us find technology that help us solve some of these problems that we've identified. And I round up with that. Thank you very much for listening to me. Um, and I'll hand over to the moderator, Otis. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Abiodun. That was a very, very powerful opening. Um, I sure have learned a, a lot uh, in the emergence of technology in marketing. I'm sure everyone has picked up a lot of important things as well. Um, I see some people have their hands raised up. Um, okay, so maybe we can entertain one or two. Yeah, maybe we can entertain a few uh, people to just uh, have like a I chat. When it is too technical, <laughs> I will push to you, Otis. I'll be ready to do that. <laughs> no problem. Let's, uh, let's see how it goes. There's quite a... There's a question that just popped up now, and uh, it has gone again. Uh, okay, let me, let me read it out. Okay. Just a second. Um, the question there says... Um, how can digital marketing professionals get buying of top management for new technology tools, bearing in mind that some top management might not understand these technologies? 
Okay, so um, what is I think I can do justice to that. Um, okay. Number one thing, um, a jobs a marketer is to actually you need you are to sell your ideas. Nobody is willing to give you any money until you are able to justify why people should part with their resources. So we know that most of this and. Hey, I'm not speaking about my company because a lot of things in my company, a lot of people are very, the top leaders are very, very techy ones. So, but we know in some companies you have people who are old, who are you know afraid of the technology and all of that. But it is our jobs as marketer to actually present. You have to do justice to that. Understand what technology need to bring because it's about value. If I tell you that, for example, you are painting a picture to say if I deliver this technology, it's going to do X, Y, Z. In terms of value to the organization, in terms of return on investment, in terms of time saving, in terms of this, there's nobody that will think that they don't want it. So it is our job to actually justify. And by justifying, one thing you need to do is identify the problem you want to use the technology to solve. It's not just having technology. What problem do you want to solve? Then how would it? How would the technology solve the problem for you? And then what value would it create for the organization? So we have the owners to actually justify that for the leaders. And then when you've done that, it's not just doing a PowerPoint and say I'm presenting to you, and then they will buy it. No, you need to sell your idea. Selling your idea doesn't mean you have to go. And that is about stakeholders management. Understand who is the power broker in the organization that will take the final decision. Then who do you need to speak with? Who do you need to speak with behind the stage that will help you to understand? So some people will understand who have the app of the CEO who will eventually. Give you the money, so it is your job to create that value chain and then get them to understand it. And that is the way we get technology, you know, being accepted within an organization. Otis, I know maybe you will have something to that, but I think that's that's the way it is. Sure, I mean, you know, that, um, I would just add that uh, more often than not, it's usually the cost that scares senior senior management, right? And then uh, the need for change. So, how do you transfer? Uh, behavior systems and all that, um, but most one of the key things will be the cost, such that if you can do it at no cost without tampering with the current state of affairs, um, why not? So I'd say when you're introducing new technology, always look out for free trial opportunities um, where you can just test this on a small small scale, and if it works, then you have enough information or results to go and uh, make your case. Absolutely. So it's definitely one place to look at. Thank well, you. thank you so much, Mr. Abiodo. It's been a very insightful session. Um, and thank you so much for making the best use of 45 minutes there. We appreciate it. And please stick around. Uh, move uh, move yes. uh, it's, it's a very robust platform for us to engage with people. You can grab other people uh, to a table. Unfortunately, there's no virtual coffee. <laughs> so you can have one by the table. Um, and, uh, All right, so thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for listening. And um, let's enjoy the rest of the program. Cool.